All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Ross, and I'm here with my colleague, Sally. Together, we are the SPSCC Counseling Service. And today, we're here to talk about role stress during this time of social yeah. distancing in, in particular. Uh, one way to think about the definition of role stress is um, each major life role you have, say it's a parent, student, employee, homemaker, um, it has a bunch of uh, demands within the role. And uh, if you get too many major life roles, you end up with too many demands. Um, and that can create a lot of stress, regardless of how, how resilient uh, you are as an individual. Sally, I know you've been hearing some stories of this from students. Um, maybe you could share a little bit about uh, what you've been hearing. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad we're talking about this this week, uh, Ross, because this is definitely a theme uh, with students that I've been working with that have been seeking out some support from counseling is just the, the increase in roles with the COVID quarantine and particularly with um, schools uh, being, uh, you know, like K through 12 being at home and doing uh, online schooling that suddenly, particularly with women I've been working with, uh, they're thrust into a role of not only being a student themselves and a parent and then taking care of their home, but now they're needing to be a teacher for maybe multiple grade levels too, depending on how many kids they have at home. So they're also in, I've been hearing kind of this tension of the role stress of not just being a parent, but now I'm a parent and a teacher. And so I can't just fully be a parent to support my child. I have to support them as a parent and provide structure and discipline as a teacher to make sure they're getting assignments done along with everything else that they're doing. And so uh, their stress has just increased a lot just from the, the role changes and then not having access maybe to resources that would have been there before the quarantine, like a daycare or maybe a, a, a grandmother you know to come in and help out with the kids so um, yeah. just a, a lot a lot going on and I know you've often had some good suggestions about how to kind of manage expectations around mm -hmm. that you have a specific word that you phrase you like to use yeah sometimes I talk with students about uh, I refer to it as systematic neglect yeah, and so right. thinking about not just neglect where you just kind of throw your hands up <clears throat> around certain responsibilities. I wouldn't advise mm. that, but being intentional about neglecting certain role responsibilities, that is usually what's, what's necessary. And um, in other words, finding a way to do things at 80% rather than 100% in order to meet all your obligations good enough including your obligation to yourself, you know, to maintain your mental and, and even physical health you know a uh, role stress yeah. can cause people to become symptomatic um, with stress related um, symptoms yeah mm -hmm. yep I'm sure seeing that just feelings of anxiety overwhelm not sleeping as well and and I, I love that idea of systematic neglect and and being good enough that you don't have to we none of us need to be the best right now we just have to be doing things good enough yeah, and that yeah. actually reflects on some things i've been uh working with students about and trying to figure out some strategies for alleviating stress and and it's doing things like you know neglecting and systematic neglect of housework the house is not going to be as clean as it used to be mm -hmm. or um you know just ordering food or picking getting takeout uh, a few nights yeah. a week so you're not cooking meals every single meal every single night uh, it's very intentional yeah. strategic ways to just be working at 80 percent like you said I, I love that phrase of um we're, it's good enough, good enough. And, to, and to let go of some perfectionism yeah and one thing i want to mark as we're, we're ending here today is you know, this often will not feel good for folks. You know, generally we feel pretty mm -hmm. uh, identified with uh, doing our best, you know, in, in a particular role mm -hmm. or doing all that it requires of us. And so that's important to note that if you're doing this right, systematic neglect, it will feel kind of disappointing. 
or a little mm. bit less satisfying than it would mm. to do things perfectly or at 100%. That's yeah. just par for the course, but it's so important to do that so that you can do everything good enough and maintain your uh, mental and physical well-being. That's a great reminder, Ross. We all need to give ourselves grace and some room and to kind of, what I'm hearing you say is just embrace some of the discomfort that comes with not working at our best selves right now. None of us are right now. We're, we're just doing the best we can and it's good enough. Yeah. And, and being with that discomfort actually can reduce some feelings of stress too, mm -hmm. ironically. Yeah. yeah. So if this is real, if you're relating to this uh, students um, and uh, feel like you could use a little bit of, uh, of a coach or help with deciding how to do things at 80% that, so things get done, um, and including keeping yourself healthy. Keep us in mind, we're open, the counseling service. We can meet with you on a Zoom meeting. Um, you would just email counseling at spscc.edu to set up uh, an appointment. Yeah, reach out to us, we're here to help. All right.